Okay, I wanted to do a video today about how do you go about finding a Thai wife? I actually wrote a book about this uh, a few years, I mean, probably five years ago now. And then I edited it a few times and, you know, it's just too hard in a book to tell people how to go about it. Uh, there's, there's connections with people that I wanted to, I wanted the people that read the book to, to uh, make with other people, with some Thai people that I know. So that way they can, uh, they can get the help they need in order to find, you know, a good person. But uh, it's just, you know, people move, phone numbers change. The guy that I was thinking about, I think he's probably seen out by now. He lost like a million baht in a, in a card game. That's another story. <laughs> So, how would you go about it? Like if you were in, you know, I'm from the States, so let's say you were in America and somehow you wanted to figure out how can you find a Thai girl to marry and either come here and live here or stay back in America with her, bring her back. How could you go about that? So, you know, the paperwork and stuff like that is one thing I'm not even going to talk about. I don't even know about. I haven't brought mine back. We're just here in Thailand, so. Um, how would you go about that? I'm not sure. I can only tell you how I would go about trying to meet somebody that was a decent Thai girl. And, you know, assuming you're a decent guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, how would you go about it? If it was me, I would get on rosettastone.com or uh, I think it's Pimsler, and I would start to learn Thai as much as possible before I came to Thailand. So those are two, those are two online courses and, and downloadable to your computer where you can really learn, you should be able to learn you know, a couple hundred words of vocabulary before you come to Thailand. And that will help immensely. If you can learn that much, it will seriously help. Um, because, you know, the Thai language is so different. The Thai people, you know, some of them speak English okay, and you'll be really lucky to find that, and really happy to, really, right? But uh, it's, you're better off to definitely learn some. And it will help you so much, you, you can't even guess. So I would do that uh, a couple months before you come. I would, I would study that every day. I would try to learn something. And then I would probably chat with people online, get on the uh, Tinder or, you know, I don't even know any of these <laughs> dating things anymore. But uh, get on there and try to find Thai people that uh, will chat with you. Hopefully girls, you know, you, you'll be more interested in chatting. But, uh, and just be aware that the Thai alphabet and the um, and the English alphabet are completely different. So when you're trying to type to somebody, you know, so at the cup and you're typing S A W A S D E E for so at the, it's not. You're just approximating what it sounds like, you know, and and you're hoping that they understand English alphabet, which which they do to some degree. I mean, Thais have it in school. But they don't really pay much attention. There's no seriousness about learning it at all. And that's why they don't so much. Um, so that would, be the f that would be the first step, I think. The second step would be try to start connecting with people that are in Thailand. Don't try to connect with me because I just don't have time. But uh, like, you know, some people that have video channels about Thailand and different areas, like Chiang Mai, that's a good area, I think, to go find somebody. It's pretty good. Um, Uban Rachatani, if you could find somebody there, that would be great. Um, Sisaket, even, it's, it's getting real small. That, that sounds super small. But, uh, but personally, for me, I would go straight to Uban Rachatani. Why? Because I met my wife there, and, um, and I met... 
literally hundreds of girls there that would make great wives. It's just, I think that's the spot, man. I don't, it's just that one of the spots I know, right? So uh, I would go to there. I would fly into Bangkok and I would fly out to Ubon. I think the airport is UBV, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's a decent sized airport. From there, I would rent a motorbike or a car. Uh, if you if you leave it in the comments, I'll I'll put it in the description. This this girl and her uh, Australian husband have a car rental place and a motorbike rental place there, and that's what I always do. I just rent something from them. I would go straight to I think it's called the Bliss Hotel, and the Bliss is uh, in a college area. College meaning Rajapat, like. Um, Mostly Rajapak kids because it's the biggest school there, but there's plenty of tech schools and um, there's Polytech is there, uh, and then there's a sports school which I think the kids stayed there though, and um, Ubon is a is a pretty big school area so when I'm telling you to come in and look for girls here, primarily you're gonna find I'm thinking that you're gonna look for college educated girls. Um, that are going to probably Uban Rachatani College, which is a better school than Rajapad. Um, you know, is it a great school in the world? No. Um, but my wife graduated there. I met a lot of girls from there, a lot of guys as well. But um, but it's it's fairly okay. I mean, I think the staff is pretty good, and uh, I think the kids get something of a decent education there. That's my guess, you know, I didn't sit through any classes. But, uh, so that's what I would do. I would stay at the Bliss Hotel. I would try to have connected already with somebody through, you know, Twitter or Tinder, or I would have tried to connect to as many people in Ubon as, as I could reach, as many people as I could find that spoke English. Doesn't matter if you're gonna date them, doesn't matter you know, if, if you think, oh, she's marriage material or not, just connect with people. And the reason is because they're going to help you immensely because the language in, in Ubon is, uh, really, they really use the tones, the highs and lows and the, and the um, low tones. And they use tones a lot. Here in Krabi, nobody really uses them. I don't hear them anyway. If they're... they're they must be just dumbed down a lot, you know? So people can actually understand me and I, I can understand them if they're not speaking Southern dialect. Um, but in, in Ubon, man, it's really like... <laughs> it's, it took me so long to try to get the tones right when I was there. And then eventually you get it, but, uh, but it, it's going to be difficult for you to speak Thai. That's why you better know a couple hundred words anyway. So that way, at least you're starting with that, and then you can figure out how to say it exactly like they do up there, because it's not going to be exactly right what you learn on Pimsleur or uh, Rosetta Stone, I would think. So once you make those connections, and then you start taking people out, take them out for, for lunch, take them out for dinner, ask them every question you can, and, and they'll ask you to, and then just tell them, you know, you're looking for somebody, say so you're, you're from the States or wherever you're from, you're looking for somebody that, you know, you might be able to marry because you just think that Thai girls are, um, for whatever reason, um, something that you like and, and that you think it would be better than finding a, a wife back at home. <clears throat> Almost for sure, like if you, if you strike them as, as a decent person, you'll start to get you'll start to have them refer people to you. So they'll say, oh, you want to go out with my, my aunt or somebody, you know? And then go out with as many people as possible. <laughs> and uh, don't... Um, and, and when ties go out, so say you're with this girl you met online, you're at dinner, you're talking to her, she's like, oh, okay, well, I have a, I have a sister. Uh, she's just graduating uh, school at UBU. Ubon uh, Rashtani University, um, do you want to go out with her? Say yes. Probably when they go out, they'll bring, she'll bring her sister too. It'll be like two girls at least. 
you might get the whole family. You have to specify, say, so it will be you and, and your and your um, sister, right? And, like, specify exactly how many people or else you'll be buying for, like, the whole crew. I mean, I've, I've had that happen one time, twice. And uh, you have to specify. And one time I just went home. I was like, oh, yeah, I thought it was just me and you or something. <laughs> you know? and, uh, I, could, I could be a real dick sometimes. But anyway, so, and then go out with them. See if you like them. See it. What you have to find in Thailand, I think, is that you have to find someone educated. You don't want somebody working at 7-Eleven. Um, you would need to find somebody that at least has been, you know, to UBU. Uh, Khan Khan University, just north of there, is also uh, fairly decent and probably even better than UBU. Uh, there's probably uh, universities, I don't know them, in Chiang Mai that are even better. And then there are universities in Bangkok that are even better. So. I would shoot for a decent university, not Rajapat, not Polytechnic, not some other tech school where they're learning how to do hair or something, um, or do retail. They're going to school to like to learn retail. Um, I would I would choose somebody that has some level of education, and even so, even knowing that they do, it's not going to be any level of education like you could ever receive at a university in America. So they're not going to have a worldview at all, although all they'll know is Thailand. You might have heard some things. Hopefully they did, and that's why you would want a university girl rather than somebody working at seven. But uh, I just think a university girl is going to be the best, the best shot you have for somebody that has somewhat of an open mind. And if you can do it in Bangkok, do it in Bangkok because they would have an even better... If you could find somebody that went to, um, I forget the uh, good universities now. Uh, whew, I knew two of them for a while. Anyway, if you could find somebody at one of the real good universities, uh, my friend, uh, my friend Steve found uh, a nurse. Actually, she had already graduated, I think, and was um, she was actually a nurse somewhere, or at least a at least in training to be, but she had uh, gotten through school already. So you might find that, you might find a doctor. Uh, in Ubon, there were a number of doctors at the, uh, at the various hospitals that I went to, but you know, there would be a doctor that was like single and like had money, she had a Mercedes or something. They don't make anything like what, what an American doctor would make, but still they have more of an open mind, they're educated, probably speak English much better than most people and um, if you can start with somebody like that you know what else could I say about it there's gonna be enormous differences between you and the girl like for me and my wife I had already been married multiple times in the States I uh, wasn't ready every time that I did Neither was the person I married, and uh, the relationships never lasted longer than, maybe maybe I hit three years one time, I can't really remember. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't ready. So anyway, when I moved to Thailand, I was 38, I think, and uh, wasn't really ready again. And uh, But met this girl, and, and, uh, and just, I couldn't believe, you know, that I that I met somebody so quick, I guess it was on the rebound or something. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I just, we've been together like almost 13 years or maybe 13 years now. 13 years, I think. And uh, enormous differences, uh, <laughs> profound differences, but uh, it's okay because you have to have that attitude that you have to eventually give in, you have to give up. You're not gonna get what you want I, didn't, I never understood that before. I always thought, oh, we got to work everything out and um, talk everything through. If there's a problem, talk it through, get it over with. But you know what? As long as you can forget, then just forget. Just uh, <laughs> There's so many things we, are, we have had a difference about and argued about. And I thought she understood how I wanted it to be. And two hours later, she'll go back to doing whatever she and you'll just bang your head up against that about 
for me it was about it's always like five times or so maybe I even hit six seven eight times I might try again to talk through it if it's not if it happens again it's like at some point you have to just give in if you're not going to give in over something stupid like one of our current things is that she doesn't pull the car forward enough in so that I can slide the motorbike through between the pillar and the car. There's lots of space, there's space the whole way, we, we could pull in another 25 feet. She stops right where I can't pull in, the corner of the car, the back end of the car, and the pillar now give me like this much space, and that's not enough for the motorbike. I must have said a hundred of, no, I must have said honestly 25 times already. Because I really would like her to do it. <laughs> it never got through. She still, every now and then she will, and say two times out of 15 times, there would be enough space for me to get through. I don't know if she's doing it on purpose or by accident. She just never thought about it. It's just by accident. She left enough space. But uh, like something like that, it drives me bonkers because then I got to, I gotta back the motorbike up, I gotta go over and then I gotta push two layers of like heavy heavy steel uh, gate out of the way when I'm on a motorbike trying to balance and then I can pull up through. But it's just a pain in the, in the butt and uh, something I wish she would do, she's never gonna do it. <laughs> I still want her to but I, I have to give up. If you don't give up on, on small things, you're never gonna make it in Thailand. You'll, because you'll start to dislike her for it, you know? Uh, and I've gone through that over 13 years. Like I started to think, wow, maybe she really doesn't care what I what I want. You know, she doesn't respect anything that I say. Some things change. But uh, like, she doesn't respect everything I say. So, but it's because, I don't know what it's because. It's maddening for a while. And it will get to you for a while. But if at some point you can't just let it go and forget it, uh, you're not going to... The marriage is going to go like, it's going to crash. Because there's, ties don't take much seriously at all. Very little. I mean, if it's a serious issue, maybe they do sometimes. But uh, maybe not. You have to be ready. You have to be in that frame of mind as a person. Like I was 38, I was just about ready to start giving up, I guess. <laughs> I was ready to start giving up on life. And uh, maybe that's where, you, maybe that's the point you have to be at whenever you come here. Because <laughs> you're not going to get everything you want. Hopefully you get a fraction of what you want. And, uh, and then you should be happy. With, you should be very happy with that. that if, if you get a fraction of what you want, you should be overjoyed here. Because uh, that's about all you're going to get. Um, can I say anything else about our... Sometimes we, we uh, have differences about our daughter, like how our daughter should be raised. And uh, on those things, we're more closely aligned because she knows really it's the most important thing to me ever. And she better give in if I'm real serious about something. So on those things, you know, most of them. But then like snacks. She would let, she would let our daughter have snacks from the time she woke up until the time she went to bed. Snack, 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 snack. <laughs> she, I mean, on the weekend, sometimes if I'm not here, if I'm not around or if I'm working all day or something like that, and then I, I hear later what my daughter had for, for food, for sustenance. <laughs> it's just, it, that's something that just blows my mind. But they have no concept of that. Uh, my friend, um, my friend Mark used to tell me he would only let his kids have snacks on the weekend. I was sure that's not happening. As soon as grandma or the wife like had a second, you know, they're going to give whatever the kids want. Anyway, so stuff like that is hard to uh, have a relationship for sure. You surely don't want uh, a relationship with someone in 7-Eleven. I didn't even talk about bar girls. Had a buddy recently, just got a bar girl pregnant. Asked me for advice when he first got here. Or, I don't know, I'm not sure if he's asking for advice or what, but, but 
And I had told him over and over, she's a bar girl. Don't fall in love with her and don't get her pregnant. That would be the worst thing you could do for a child. What's he do? He does exactly that. Then he calls, then he, uh, then he sends me a message um, for advice, he says. I got her pregnant. I was like, yeah, what advice do you want? Well, about, you know, the marriage. You think they'll pressure me to get married? You know, I don't, I honestly don't even care. I, to me, the most important thing is that you just created a baby with a whore and now you're going to try to make things right. It's, there's no making it right. You just, you just gave your son or daughter a whore for a mom. That's the way I think about it. And, uh, yeah, sure, people are doing, like I would, if I could be a prostitute on Soy Bangla and I was a Thai and that's all I could do. I had no skills for anything. I had nothing, nothing better to do but lay, lay with my legs up in the air as a, as a female. Yeah, I would do that. I'm just saying, whenever you date a bar girl, you, I mean, the chance that you get her pregnant is there, right? The chance that your kid is going to have a mom who was a bar girl and has bar girl friends and has people on drugs coming in and out of your house. Anyway, I'm, I'm off on a totally different... Anyway, that's it. Uh, I talked for 22 minutes. Hope that's enough. Hope it gives you some idea how I would go about trying to find a Thai wife. If it was me, um, I would weed out anybody who ever said, oh, my sister's a bar girl in Pattaya or something like that. Cut. Just, she's out the window. I mean, you couldn't possibly, don't bring anybody, don't, don't find a girl that has bar girl friends. Don't find a girl that ever worked in a bar. Don't find a girl that has a bunch of lady boyfriends that are going to be coming over and stuff. It's all trouble, man. It's drugs, but it's also conniving trouble. Like, they'll be whispering in her ear to, like, do this or that. You know, oh, your your husband has so much money. He's not giving you so much, is he? No, just, like, 25000 a month. Oh, is that it? You know, you should be getting sixty. My friend, My friend over here has a guy from Germany. He's giving her, like, 60000 a month. Minimum. What is this guy doing to you? You know, it's like... Holy crap, you don't need that. Anyway, probably another video. All right, hope that helps somebody. Cheers.